In order to take samples out of the core to send to scientists around the world, we retrieve the core from the racks in the refrigerator storage and we load them onto a cart, then we wheel those into the laboratory and place them on the tray on the desktop. Then we have to actually take off the plastic wrap that is surrounding the core. This plastic wrap has a specific purpose. It's to retain the moisture inside the core so that it doesn't dry out and also hold the core together. When this core was taken out of its aluminum sleeve at the drill site, we marked the core with a red and black line. These are our reference lines and these tell us the direction of the top of the core relative to the bottom of the core. And they also note the depth locations along the core. The top of this core was taken at 10,333 feet measured depth along the borehole. The core is intact and we have only taken a few samples out of it. One sample is uh, noted by this styrofoam block for a principal investigator named Gratier. It's an arcosic sandstone, a sedimentary rock, and it shows several characteristics of a sedimentary rock, and one of those is sedimentary bedding. So when a sediment is laid down in a basin, it forms layers, and when it's compacted and lithified into a rock, we can see those layers that we refer to as sedimentary bedding. The bedding is distinguished by variations in color. So the bedding in this sandstone is in this orientation, and this fault clearly offsets this dark layer. After that rock is formed, the rock can then be deformed and its current state will be different. The deformation at this depth, about three kilometers depth, will be fractures or brittle deformation. This core is cut by two dominant fracture orientations. One is in this orientation right there, and then the other set is in this orientation coming down through here. Most of these fractures are not disturbed, but then a couple of them have been broken, and that is an artifact of drilling. An important aspect of studying the core is to understand the orientation of these natural fractures and the characteristics of these natural fractures because they tell us a lot about the deformation on the San Andreas Fault.